as was the case in the old days, uh, they were moved far, pretty far west and out to San Francisco, and Greyhound used to sell a lot of their buses out of the San Francisco uh, Bay Area. Here's one doing a, a local service to Concord, California. This is how they would close out their life. This happened also with the 4104s and uh, the Scenic Cruises. The vast bulk of them were moved to the Bay Area. P4700. Back wheels plated on that and the one alongside of her too. Pennsylvania Greyhound 4700 would be the first bus bought new in 1947. Signed up for Lemur, Ohio. Now here is E4104. The only 33 foot silver side that thought it was a 4104. So it was obvious they were still making and delivering the 33 footers in 1941. Again, note the first passenger window, how long it is. Uh, this is the 33 foot car. And a darn nice looking little bus too. 1948, ex-Pennsylvania Greyhound, now Eastern with the corporate merger. If you notice that uh, Greyhound emblem under the front window uh, windshield, the same thing was, was the 4104s were delivered with, too. See it over there on the nose of the 4104? And initially, the first scenic cruisers carried those uh, little running Greyhound dogs. This is a relatively rare picture. You've seen it in some other videos, but that's uh, the 33-footer on the left and the 35-footer on the right. This really shows you the difference from the long front passenger window to the little one in the front. E28, Eastern Greyhound Lines, fleet number 28. Now there was a, a, a Greyhound travelogue put out. It was a little hokey in nature, and we have a copy of it. It's not very good quality. But still and all, I think you probably enjoy seeing it. Oh, P4024 is a 4101 pre-war Silverside. So we're going to uh, show you this movie. I remember the first time I ever saw it uh, when I was just a little puppy. I, was, uh, I wrote Greyhound and they let us borrow it for our Boy Scout troop meeting. And everybody went spastic over it. They like seeing America. I like. So, without further ado, here's a movie for you. By the way, that's Richmond Greyhound there, and that C44 ACF Brill Suburban back there, belonging to Carolina Trailways. We have a brand new HO scale model coming out on that car very shortly. I want to tell you. Once again, the Greyhound movie. Gallop. Isn't he gorgeous? 
Howdy, folks. Hello there. Included you too, ma'am. You're missing the Garden of the Gods, huh? Over there. That's Pike's Peak. Ahead of us is Balanced Rock. Steamboat Rock on the right. Oh, the rocks are all so red. That's how the state gets its name. Colorado is a Spanish word for red. Oh, it certainly pays to travel with a school teacher. <laughs> After all, Taffy, I'm taking this tour to write a thesis for my master's degree. In our state, teachers get credits for traveling. So you can teach geography at it? So we can teach everything better. The more we get around and see the country, the more we know what makes America tick. for hours? Shh, he'll think you're trying to, to... Well, I am. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Williams. Yes, ma'am. Did you see the balance rock back there? No, ma'am. I must have dozed off. Well, you ought to stay awake. You miss a lot. Such as what, ma'am? Well, they say there are a lot of wild Indians around here. Well, I'll see plenty of wild Indians when they get to Gallup. If the tribal dances are still on. Tribes here from all over the West. Gee. Oh, look! There's another kind of dance. I wonder what kind that is. Could you tell us what dance that is? Butterfly dance, ma'am. They think butterflies are the spirits of their departed ancestors. the two girls that were sitting here. Well, I think I know where they are. I'll get them. Thanks. That's the sun, moon, and star dance. <laughs> Gets them all in at once, huh? They're not taking any chances slighting any of them. It's their prayer for abundant crops, long life, and happiness. You gals better get a move on if you don't want to miss your bus. Oh, our bus. So you're going to Spokane? Yeah. And you're going to Pendleton to be in the rodeo? Yes, ma'am. Roundabout like. I had to see a man back in Gallup. You boys like traveling? Yeah, especially this way. You can see a lot. And you can always catch a bus. I noticed. 
<laughs> but I thought a cowboy always rode his horse every place he went. They do, ma'am, but my horse is a regular homebody, so I make the long trips by myself. Of course, I send him postcards along the way. Stop here for lunch, folks. You know, ma'am, I was right pleasantly surprised. What do you mean? Well, you actually smiled a few moments ago. On you, it looked good. Thank you. Uh, careful, ma'am. Silly. The is too fresh. Hello. Mind if we share the table? Oh, of course, honey. Two's company, three's a crowd, and four's just right. <laughs> well, move over, me. Thanks. Hey, what do you eat? Raw grapefruit. Tastes good. I've never heard of it before. Why, you ought to come down our way and have some spiced kumquat. Where's that? On the way down from Miami to Key West Sea by bus. It's a fabulous highway, shooting right out over the ocean for more than a hundred miles. Like I told Amelia, she's just got to have that in that theme she's riding. Bridges carry you from one tropical island to another. Keys, they call them. I don't know why. Key is the Spanish word for Ireland. Oh. Well, halfway down is Greyhound Key. That's a nice spot to stop off, especially if you like deep sea fishing. there serves the yummiest dishes like baked bonefish and key lime pie. I've eaten in post houses all the way from New England. Riding a bus, you get to sample the special dishes of the country you travel through. Well, I ride a bus because it's more fun. Right now, I'm on an expense-paid tour. On a tour? Where's the rest of your party? Oh, well, that's the way they do it with Greyhound. You can travel alone or in a group and go where you please. You see, the whole trip is planned before you leave. They even make hotel reservations, if you like. Of course, I was practically raised on a bus. You see, I was born in Minnesota. That's where Greyhound started, between two little towns, Alice and Hibbing. Up to then, the fare was a dollar and a half one way. So they started this first bus line and charged 15 cents. It doesn't surprise anyone up there how this bus business has grown. Greyhounds run in every one of the 48 states now. And Canada, too. I'm putting that in my thing. Whatever gave you the idea for this theme you're writing? Well, one of my favorite poems is Henry Van Dyke's. It's home again, home again, America for me. My heart is turning home again, and there I long to be. In the land of youth and freedom beyond the ocean bars, where the air is full of sunlight and the flag is full of stars. So, my thesis is titled, America for Me. Well, ma'am, you're sharper than a horned toad. Yeah, give us an educated for instance. Well, for instance, I've written up one of the oldest festivals on Earth, and it's celebrated in this country. The Mardi Gras. It started 5,000 years ago among the Greeks and Romans welcome the spring. When the early Christian church decreed the 40 days of Lent, it was made the period of fun and feasting just before Lent. Since it comes just ahead of Ash Wednesday, it was named Fat Tuesday by the French, who brought the celebration to this country. Fat Tuesday in French is Mardi Gras. when anyone sleeps that whole week. But it's something you'll never forget the rest of your life. And while you're talking about shindigs, don't forget the big rose festival up our way. You mean a Pasadena? No, doggone it. I mean Portland, Oregon, the city of roses. It's right next to Mount Hood. 
can put on a rose festival and a ski carnival the same day. Till you've seen the Northwest. I was sure going to see part of it. My way to the Canadian Rockies. Say, Tex, haven't you got anything to brag about in your part of the country? Well, now, ma'am, that's a right ornery thing to say to a man from Texas. A state's so big that some of the counties are bigger than some states. Now, you take my hometown, San Antonio. About half our town is as Mexican as Chihuahua. Half is as Western as the Chisholm Trail, and just across the street is another half as North American as Chicago. Isn't that three halves? Ma'am, in Texas, everything is big enough to have three halves. And of course, we have the Alamo. You, you know the old saying, remember the Alamo? We remember it with a Santa Santo Fiesta every year. Pretty. But do you know what I remember most of all about San Antonio? It's that little old twisty river that winds in and out all through the town. And you meet the best looking soldiers. San Antonio's been an army post for several hundred years. Anyway, I met one and we went for a boat ride on the river. It was terribly romantic. Oh, you and your romance. Hey, we better get back to our bus. Well, I guess we won't be seeing you boys tomorrow. Amelia and I are going to stay over when the bus stops at sunset and take the 8 o'clock in the morning, aren't we? You know, uh, that's funny. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. Yeah, what a coincidence. Aren't you? Well, I thought the other young lady would like to sit with Chuck this morning. Hi. Hi. Good morning. 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 Yes, ma'am, it's a big country. Yes, ma'am, it's a powerful big country. It's a little overpowering. I prefer New England. You know, I, I never been to New England. The furthest east I ever got was Michigan. Isn't Michigan a long way from Texas? Don't you try to get a long way from home for your vacation? You know, they call Michigan the water wonderland. Whether you're skimming along in a boat or lazing on the bank or, or fishing for some of their game fish. Yeah, that's my idea of a vacation. It's nice, but I still prefer New England. Well, now, ma'am, if you'd tell me about it, maybe I'd agree with you. Well, up there you had the feeling of being at the birthplace. At the beginnings of America. That's where the pilgrims landed. On that same stern and rock-bound coast. When George Washington established the lighthouse service, the first lights were built in New England. It's a fascinating thing to take a tour of these famous landmarks. So many visitors come up there from all parts of the country. Lighthouses are so friendly and reassuring, and at the same time, so ageless. And along the way, the woods and templed hills, the same that watched the pilgrims gathering for the first Thanksgiving. 
and Ethan Allen's boys marching to meet the Redcoats. You eat in places that were old before there was a United States, such as Lyman Howe's Red Horse Tavern. Later, it became Longfellow's Wayside Inn. Once, this was the first overnight stop of the stagecoach out of Boston. It was a day's run then. In today's coach, it is only a matter of minutes. Through its hospitable front door, travelers have been entering into its welcome for, for almost 300 years. Ma'am, you're, you're downright poetical. That sounds like right nice country. Oh, I, I didn't mean to get carried away. Hey, looks like Texas finally melting down your friend a little. Uh, I have a lot about New York in my theme. In fact, I could have done a whole paper on it. Just to stand on top the Empire State Building and look down. To me, it's another Grand Canyon. Up our way, teachers take their pupils down to New York every year in charter buses. Another favorite spot to take them is Washington, D.C. And my theme, I say one of the best times to go is cherry blossom time. When all the buildings and monuments are given a fairyland quality. especially to go as Mount Vernon. No matter how often you go, from the moment you step on the grounds, you, you actually feel the presence of Washington. The house and grounds look today exactly as they did when George and Martha lived there. Say, do you sleep in those specs? I beg your pardon? Well, I mean, can you see without them? Of course I can. I only wear them when I travel. Why, they're pretty. What are? Your eyes. Say, you know, I I'll bet if you cut or fluffed up your hair or something, you'd be powerful handsome. Hey, Tex. Your next chance to send your horse a postcard will be San Francisco. Yeah. Now, wait till you see San Francisco. I'll show you how to open up that Golden Gate. And what a sight it is. The Golden Gate Bridge and Oakland Bay. You know, it's like a fella said once. These Americans, they think everything they have is the biggest or the longest or the tallest. And it usually is. I think some of us brag too much. About our country? Shucks, I don't. It's just our way of telling her we love her. You know, when I get married, I'll be telling my wife that she's the sweetest little woman and the best cook in the world. You think she ain't gonna like that? Well, as I was saying about San Francisco, ma'am, you'll want to be sure and see Twin Peaks, Telegraph Hill. It wouldn't be San Francisco without cable cars and Chinatown. Fisherman's Wharf is one place she'll have to go. When you see how they dish out the shrimp, you'll know for sure this is the land of plenty. And there's Market Street with the ferry building at the lower end. For a real view of the city, you gotta go way up to the top of the mark. And speaking of something high, I suppose you know that tomorrow we'll be seeing the oldest and the highest. Well, anyway, we'll be seeing the redwoods. Then you say what they are. Aren't they? 
Yeah, I was just thinking. There's a doggone big. I don't see why they ain't in Texas. Well, honey, if it they wasn't so doggone big, we'd show sure enough move them for you. Well, now, thanks, partner. If one of you girls had changed seats with one of us, we could see how big they are on both sides. All righty. No, thank you. Amelia, honey, I don't understand you at all. He's so nice and, well, you're not very nice to him. He's too forward. I don't like that type of man. Well, you won't have to put up with him much longer. He's changing for Pendleton tomorrow. Well, I'm really not interested in what he does. But he... What time should bus leave, Tex? Oh, pretty soon now. Did you see those Indian earrings I wanted to buy? They were very attractive. Oh, why, well, look, they're the boys. Why, hello there. Honey, ma'am, Tex was wondering if he'd see you two before he left. Oh, I'm awful sorry you have to leave, Tex. Uh, so am I, Taff. Excuse me. Well, that's the most cold to brush off I ever had in my life. Well, ma'am, I'll, uh, I'll be leaving the party soon. Goodbye, Mr. Williams. Well, I don't know why, but I sure seem to rub you the wrong way. If I've said anything wrong, I'm downright regretful. But I'll tell you one thing. I've seen a lot of females, but you take the silver-plated spurs for being the cussedest. Put that in your theme. 